Conan, did you watch AEW? Yes, I did. Not great. Not great, D.I. Did you see the number? Yeah, tell, well, I what knew was it was going to be bad. So, seven, seven, yeah, 776, yeah. 776,900. Yeah. 776,900. Wow. The, the, the show is literally has nothing interesting happening on, happening on it. I mean, I'm sorry, but that's just, it's not that interesting, which is why people are not tuning in. So it starts off with, you know, the typical, like, like last week they set this up with the big run in and stuff and everything with all the Broderick strong and everything. So we're immediately into open up with an eight man tag match. Uh, Jericho's on commentary. Uh, Cassidy, Cole, Roderick strong and Bandito. So Bandito at the beginning of the show last week wrestled orange Cassidy. They buddied up after the match. They ran out to Cassidy, interfere because Cassidy put the glasses on him. Right. They ran yeah. out to to help uh, uh, Adam Cole when he was getting beat up by by the Jericho Appreciation right. Society for some reason. Which and now no they're sense. all now they're all together as a, as, a, as a team for this match, this eight man tag. Daniel Garcia, Hager, Menard, and Parker. Um, do, 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 everybody and their mother knew who was going to win this match, but Garcia put Cassie in the Dragon Slayer. Cole broke it up with a kick to the head. There was a series of several wrestlers performing rap. This is very typical in that company. This is a very, very perfect way to describe it. There was a series of several wrestlers performing rapid fire spots, and then Cassidy got a near fall on Garcia. And in the end, Cole hit Parker with a boom knee strike and pinned him. So after the match, Cole just ran straight up the entranceway to Jericho and he threw very, not, not good looking punches at him and a group of security guards pulled him away. What did you think of this segment, this match? I just thought it was a little too long for my taste. Bro, it was almost 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. That's, that's way too much for me. Uh, I am, you know, I, everybody used to remember when they were saying, oh, Daniel Garcia is going to be this breakout star. Bro, he's just another guy in the Jericho Society. Just like Jimmy Utah is the bottom guy in the Blackpool Society thing, but club. But if they take advantage of the rub, they could be money in the future. But but as I stated, and of course, you get labeled all sorts of... My point was they're being pushed too fast and too soon. That was my point. And obviously mm-hmm. I was right because they're now in factions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's like all those people that said that Jay White... It, does he come off to you as a star? Well, he wasn't even on the show this week. You're I mean, kidding stars, yourself. Stars, if he stars are on the show. You no, know, he was on the show at the end. Remember when he helped oh, wait, hey. Juice Robinson beat up Ricky Starks when he was wearing those white oh, pants? Oh, I miss this. Hang on. The, yeah, but, oh, man, man, oh, let me see. Yeah, I, let's get to yeah, We'll get to that. I, I, I missed yeah. a couple things here at the end. All right. I, thought, I think I Jay I White, it. I think the problem with people is Jay White in, in Japan, and I didn't follow him, might have been positioned as a star. And I think that's from what I read. And they're used to seeing him like that, and but that doesn't translate automatically. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so um, now I read that they hired this guy called Will Washington. Yeah, Fightful. I, <laughs> That's hysterical. Oh, is that where he's from? <laughs> yeah, yes. it's Fightful. Yeah, he's the wow. guy that we were talking about that that uh, uh, Billy he, Billy was arguing with on Twitter. But this is the guy that that wrote the um, wrote that he was he was tracking. The amount – well, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Joe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Wasn't yeah, yeah. he tracking yeah, the amount of, of minutes black wrestlers were on during Black History Month? Yeah, who was in the main event, who won, who lost, what time they were on, stuff like that. Right, right. Yeah. Like, you know, and now Tony says he's got a – I mean, bro, if you're hiring dirt sheet guys to help book your show, <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, maybe but, he's good. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Maybe maybe the guy, maybe the guy has value. But it's very weird of where he's like – I mean, these guys are like writing about AEW and putting them over and stuff and things. So Tony hires them, you know. <laughs> so, well, here's the thing, bro. Right. He needs help, and yeah. this guy might be able to help right. him. Never but know. if you've got Sanjay Dutt and Jeff Jericho and uh, Jeff Jarrett and Malenko and guys like that, why aren't yeah. they the ones being hired? And yeah. nothing against this guy, but because he does need help. You know, you know who's and, the most um, pissed. The most pissed about him being brought on for what is it, a long-term creative, and he's one of the first wrestling podcasters. Every wrestling podcaster is like, "What? Well, how come him?" You know, it's right. it's a lot of bitterness all over. Well, how about it. this? I saw that JD New York guy is get has got is getting interviewed by CNBC. <laughs> yeah, 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 for Vince for McMahon. For like the, God like damn! Kind of, I'm pro shit. It just shows you like how there's like wrestling marks out there. Like there's fans right. of all this dirt, the dirty stuff, and they think that these people like know what they're talking about, you know. But um, he's being interviewed for what? It's a CNBC special on Vince McMahon, right? So, yeah. Or on the the, the, the Vince McMahon coming him? back, the Endeavor. I don't. 
I have you no tell idea, me. Conan. <laughs> like he said, they, they thought he was an expert or something. So, okay. Uh, so <laughs> here's the other thing about this match. Bandito to me seems out of place. Like a lot of guys, like Brian Cage and that Swerve's group, whatever mogul, the limited right. or whatever the they're called. Right. Daddy ass. I know he's over, but he just seems way out of place with the other two guys. You know the uh, hey, listen, right. the acclaim. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I did like that Jericho was taunting uh, Cole on the headset, right? By saying that he did protect his wife when obviously right. the guy was handcuffed. That was right. great. Uh, this is these are the little things that kind of piss me off, bro. Jericho's standing up, looking at the monitor, right? Right. How can he miss that Cole? Yeah, running, running right, the yeah, running right at him. What yeah, do you think good. he was going to do? Run to the back to get some catering or something? What, what, the guy's running to beat you up, you know? Uh, so these are the know. little things. <laughs> yeah, those yeah. are the little things that like, come on, man. You could have just turned his back to him and you're talking to somebody or, you know, telling somebody up or, and then all of a sudden he runs from behind you or something. But that was a little bit too much for me. But go ahead. All right. So backstage, uh, riveting segment here. Darby Allen and Jack Perry were interviewed by Renee Paquette, who asked how they felt about teaming up. Perry said they may not like each other, but they have some things in common. Perry said they both started in AEW and busted their asses if they haven't headlined a pay-per-view. This is it, Allen said. He had that one of them would win the championship at double or nothing. Tonight, it's showtime, concluded Allen. Did this get you fired up for this match? No, and the problem is they're trying to, they've been trying to create tension between these two, and it's just not there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so the, now they're forcing it, uh, you know. So, yeah, there wasn't so, much there. So we go to the back, a little chaotic scene where uh, Jericho's selling. Cole is ushered out of the building by security while Jericho stood by. And then Britt Baker showed up and slapped Jericho in the face, and he sold, sold his face even more. That was actually pretty funny. Um, so the Blackpool Combat Club is cutting a promo. The volume was turned down for a few seconds for some reason, and Danielson recalled a legend saying he was the best there was, biz was, and ever will be. That is true, bro. At the beginning, the guy's talking, you couldn't hear, hear him. Danielson yeah. said he found it arrogant that the legend thought no one would ever be better than him. Daniel said he's better, the best wrestler in the world today, and if he's not, not then one of his stable mates is. Moxley spoke about how the elite were innovators, but now he's not so sure. Moxley said the Blackpool Combat Club gets more dangerous every day, and he said he has new weapons and a whole new version of himself, and he can't wait to show Kenny Omega when they meet in a steel cage next week. Moxley vowed to leave one hell of a mark. All right. Okay, I just want to make one comment here. First of uh -huh. all, good promo by him and Mox, but I thought I thought it was kind of weird and kind of a babyface promo when when Brian said he found it arrogant that Bret Hart thought no one would ever be better than him, and that yeah that there's going to be a lot of people better than him and Bret Hart, bro. As a heel, he should have said he, he's better and he's the best wrestler in the world today, and and you know what I'm saying? Right. Absolutely. You know, yeah. I mean, you, you, you said you were the best. You're wrong. I'm the best, and I'm the best there's ever going to be. You know what right. I'm saying? That's what I think he should have said. Do you, do you feel me on that one or no? I, I feel you. All right. So so the, the so we do Sarai versus Willow Nightingale. Um, this wasn't very good. Uh, so Storm distracted the referee while So entered the ring, and Willow hit the pounce on So who hit the ropes hard. Willow knocked Storm off the end of the forearm shot, and the Sarai hit the good night DDT and scored the pin. Um, I like her finish. That she does, Soraya. Right. Uh, yeah. So after the match, uh, Outcast. I, 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 I used to use that finish, but go ahead. One okay, this, or this, set up my finish. Yeah. This was okay. So now the everybody looked really green in this post match. The Outcast continued to rough up Willow. Then Hikaru, Hikaru Shida's music played, and she ran out with a kendo stick, and she had she had like kind of hot, semi high heel slippers on. Okay, right. which looked ridiculous, and like she, she would come to fight wearing those. All right. right. Okay. Did you agree with that? I looked about. I was like, "Why is she wearing those shoes?" So Jamie, uh, um, she dropped the kendo stick and then hugged each of the outcasts, who then held held Willow for Sheeta to spray paint. Then Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker into the ring behind the outcasts, and she just spray painted the paint in Soraya's face. Then the babyface trio put the outcasts down, and bro, like like almost instantly, just laid them out. Like, like, like they were no, they were all three. They were like all of a sudden they were all knocked out, all lying next to each other, and then she just sprayed AEW on 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 the heels. What did you think of this? All right, I'm gonna make a point just like that. First off, the match was okay, okay, and I love the outcast look and attitude. Right, but uh, yeah, I'm not into this. This has been going on forever. I really feel and this is not any personal shot. She's very overexposed. I, I would wish that they would injure her so people will miss her and then she can come back. 
She just turned, and this is exactly what you were alluding to. She just turned was done so quick, it didn't resonate. Nobody took time for anything to sink in. She came in, changed, changed again, spray paint, hugged everybody. And it was so done. Bro, take your time. You know what I'm saying? Right. You could have taken three minutes off that ma- that uh, match at the top, put it here, so they could have had more time to do what they were going to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, and here's another thing. Hater, who I was campaigning for to be the champion, she never defends it. You know? I just right. think, I don't know, they just need different baby faces. And why does Jade never interact with any of these girls? Right. It's just, <laughs> Jade Cardigan. Yeah. yeah, she's like doing her own thing. You know, it's like kind of weird. So yeah. so this is kind of weird. Bro, this is kind of like, I mean, the, the look of the House of Black, these guys have a, arguably the best look and presentation of characters on the show. Would you agree with that? That's kind of like yep, a game. One of the best looks. Okay. Mm-hmm, yep. All right, so they kind of pre tape promo. And they said the title is a reminder that some in the company get away with murder while others are punished for following the rules. They said they would give any three wrestlers a shot at their titles, but there, but there, there will not be an easy way out with rope breaks or count outs. Welcome to the open house. So basically, they're just doing it like this is their angle. It's an open challenge for anybody to take, take them in their, in their open house format wrestling thing here. Like, the, bro, can't you run a storyline for these guys? Like, the, all this is going to be is like every week they're going to have – they're just going to be re- – they're going to wrestle somebody. And like, there's no right. angle. Well, there's no, yeah. With a lot of people, they do that with a lot of people, Glenn. Yeah. And yeah. here's another. You know, I was talking about people that don't fit. What does Julie Hart add to this group, if anything? Yeah, no idea. Um, um, and and here's the thing: they were making all the stipulations, like you know, twenty second countouts on the floor and other like that. Right. It's, yeah. And I'm like, why isn't Excalibur doing this? Why are they getting the rules? Right. I don't know. It's just, so That's and it's rules are confusing. So it's, you know, right. it's just like too much, right? So Vikingo, Phoenix, and Penta make their entrance as Alex Abrahantis for the trio's battle royal. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so you had the um, the Josh Woods, Tony Nese, and Ari Davari group. You had the, uh, the, the Dark Order you had the Butcher and the Blade. You had QT Marshall's group. Uh, you had the, the Acclaimed. Um, and the, the, the Claims Act is getting kind of old. You know, they're doing the exact same gimmick every week. Just come and do the thing. Hey, they claim to just, they do the scissoring. It's just, that, that's it, right? Bro, it's like, I, I would have, the last time Vikingo was on this show, okay, it, it, he drew a decent number, okay, and it was, it was a, quite a spectacle. He was kind of like an afterthought in this match. I thought this, if, if you were laying this out, wouldn't you want this to come down to maybe like Vikingo was one of the final guys left and something to do anything? But he got eliminated just like, got, got like punked by, Bro, by Hobbs. That's, and that, that's, my, that's my sentiment exactly because first of all, Tres de Mayo, really? I mean, that's not Cinco de Mayo, right. but anyways. Right. Tres de Mayo and then – because it's the 3rd of May. Right. And if it is going to be a Cinco de Mayo match, why is it mostly Latinos? But having said that, I would rather see the Lucha Brothers and Bikingo instead of Acclaim versus House of Black. Because Acclaim does like more comedy and these guys – and, you know, House of Black more like street fight style in a, in a way. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this battle royal was brutal and uninteresting like most – Battle Royals, including Triple A's. There, I said it, and guess what? Nothing happened. It's a true. Well, it was it was so funny how Hobbs was being showcased, and then he just kind of got eliminated like an honest. Sh- but here, when I was when they first came in, this is what I was thinking. I go, they're probably going to leave the Lucha Brothers and Vikingo to the end, so Vikingo and Phoenix can really show off, and right. Pentagon will throw in all the charisma that he does. And either if they win or they lose. That him and Phoenix together, who are two of the best flyers and workers in the world, are gonna f- go crazy. No, they all got eliminated. Right. I was like, I was like, I was like yeah, yeah. I could, I could believe how easily, like, the king did just a couple. The same thing. You yeah. brought the same thing up that I was thinking. Yeah, and it's like Vikingo. I was like, he, he hardly did anything. No. And this is a guy, like, I thought it would be a showcase for Vikingo again because, like, right. every time he's on TV, it should be an attraction and stuff. For the, and, like, he did nothing and got eliminated. <laughs> so, it's like, yep. oh, no. Um, Missed opportunity. Yeah. So, so this is, uh, I'm losing interest in this. Uh, Sammy Guevara was interested by, by uh, Peckhead, and MJF showed up and tried to buddy up to Guevara. He said he watched the show back last week and knew there was no one in the SUV, SUV when MJF claimed there was no room. 
MJF claimed he suffered from chronic back pain and needed to lay down, but he didn't want Guevara to think he's a wimp. And MJF said Guevara deserves better, and he doesn't blame him for not wanting to be his friend anymore. And MJF started to leave, but Guevara grabbed him and kissed his forehead, and they ended up hugging each other. This is this is not interesting stuff, bro. That's why the show didn't do a good number. This is the stuff is just not interesting at all. It's silly, you know. Um, I'm how what did I, I miss this? How did I miss it? Plus, it makes hey. Sammy look dumb unless he's playing dumb, right? Because it's like, oh, my back was hurting. Oh, yeah, okay, my bad. And, right. you know, and this is an dumb, but and and then like, are you that? Are you that gullible? Are you pretending you're that gullible? And I told you, I told you that Sammy Guevara would do something to MJF in this match so those two guys could right. win, and he did. You right. know, of like. Course. Well, let's get to it. Okay. So they, and, they, they have, and, and, and let me re- reiterate what I said last week. Bro, they sure went a long way to do something that they had at the beginning. They did. You know what I'm saying? They had a four-way, and that's how they should have kept it. So next, so Kenny Omega and Don Callis delivered a backstage promo after Excalibur's hyped, uh, Excalibur hyped Omega's cage match with Moxley for next week. Callis pointed to the scar on his head and said that he thinks about what Moxley did to him every day, and Callis called Moxley a sick, twisted, narcissistic sociopath. Omega said he knows Moxley will make him bleed, but he won't be the last man standing. Omega said Moxley made it personal, and it ends next week. Uh, and they're just going to bleed all over each other next week. I think so. Bro, I just think it's really weird that... In the year 2023, they're doing such gratuitous blood on the show when people know they're blading each other, that they're, that they're blading themselves. I don't, well, I I don't think know this how match, uh, this match might call for it, you know, because now this is kind of like a but, blood but still, feud. it's like they're, they're looking for every excuse to have blood on the I show. I know, like, said know. it yesterday. They do a lot of gratuitous blood. That's why I don't like it because it doesn't mean yeah. this one. It, it, there, there is some tension for it, but in most of the times they use it. Uh, okay. it's very gratuitous like we we're doing it we like we can or a shock value or i don't know what okay so this is weird so wardlow wrestles logan lemieux mm-hmm. um beats him Ooh. in a minute Ooh. logan lemieux and he beats him in a minute just a squash match it's, you know so afterwards wardlow said he didn't even break a sweat he called for christian cage to bring out his monster luchasaurus for an open challenge title defense Cage and Luchasaurus made their entrance and remain on the stage, and Cage healed on the Baltimore crowd and said he could send Luchasaurus to the ring to take the title if he wanted to. He said that wasn't going to happen, especially in Baltimore. Cage said the title shot doesn't belong to Luchasaurus, it belongs to him. And I was like, all right. <laughs> I don't know. This is so here's this the is thing, like, we're, we're five weeks into this angle with these guys coming out and, and staring at each hot. other, and it's, it's not hot at all. Right. Right. And here's a problem, and I've said this before. That's the risk you take when you have somebody hot Mm-hmm. And you take the air out of him, yeah. Because sometimes you can never get him hot again. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that it can't happen because they're trying to reset everything right now and resuscitate the guy. But you wouldn't be doing having to do this if you would have done it right the first time. You know what I'm saying? Right. This he was actually be, yeah. Right. Go ahead. This next thing was very entertaining. Footage aired of Jared Lethal and Sotnam singing Dutt knocking on Mark Briscoe's door in Delaware. Dutt and Singh were bib overalls. Dutt said they wanted to say sorry for last week's misunderstanding and wanted to make it up to him by lending a helping hand on the farm. Briscoe handed his infant daughter to Dutt and said, let's go to work. And Jeff was about to sing with my baby tonight on the guitar when Papa Briscoe showed up, which led to Jarrett's crew scurrying. Papa said he knew Mark Lethal, knew Mark, knew Mark knew Lethal a long time, and he's okay, but he should be aware of the guy in the, over in the coveralls. Mark asked which one. Papa said both of them. Then Lethal looked at the camera and announced that he and Jarrett were challenging FTR for the AEW Tag Team titles at Double or Nothing. And Lethal recalled Mark beating FTR in the past and asked him how he did it. He said, is that what this is all about, Mark asked? And Jarrett suggested they go fishing and talk strategy. They, they made this work, but this is so silly, right? I don't know. What yeah. do you think it is? You know? I thought it was a little bit uh, corny. Um, some stuff was funny, but, uh, but uh, more to me, more missed than hit. I can understand. Let's throw some levity in there because Jeff likes ha ha, and so does Jay. So do we. Um, but this was not that funny to me. <clears throat> Ricky Starks and Juice. Ricky Starks beat Juice in nine minutes and thirty seconds. After the match, Jay White runs in, attacks Starks, and Excalibur said White knew that Sean Spears wasn't in the building. So Starks fought back. Starks fought back and set up White for a Rushambo, but Robinson broke it up, and both heels fled to ringside. What What did you think of this? I didn't see this. Yeah, I don't think, you know, I don't think people, I think they see Juice Robinson as another guy. Mm-hmm. This match really didn't have a lot of heat. And Ricky Starks is another guy like Wardlow that's lost a lot of heat. And the people like him, you know. And, yeah, this means nothing to me. I mean, Jay White running in, I don't know. I'm, I, I don't know who's going to help Starks to even up the sides because that's what it looks like they're trying to do, I would assume. <sighs> 
Um, so next, so Darby Allen and Jack Perry will pump each other up at, uh, inside a dressing room, and Allen exits the room. Then MJF entered the room and closed the door. MJF recalls saying that he and Perry could beat the top of the sport. He still believes that, and he pointed to what he's done for Sammy Guevara and said he could do the same for Perry. MJF said Perry is in championship material, and that's okay because he's offering a spot next to the throne. Perry says he's not looking for a spot next to the throne. He's looking for the crown. Then Allen returned to the room. MJF told Allen he should probably talk to his tag team partner, then left the room. Perry told Allen not to worry about it and said he had this. Nah, I got this, and untrusting Allen responded. So they're trying to set up dissension. I'm not buying any of this. Um, so at the end, so, so the match uh, ends up where obviously this is going, with MJF and Guerrero B- Guevara bickered. Uh, MJF slapped Guevara across the face and barked at him. And MJF turned away, but Guevara spun around and super kicked him. Then Perry ran the ropes and Allen tagged himself in before Perry hit Guevara with an elbow to the back of the head. Perry covered Guevara. Allen went on. Allen went up top and executed the coffin drop with no regard for Perry, who rolled away, causing Allen to hit Guevara with a move painting him. After the match, Allen and Perry went face to face and jawed at one another. And then MJF walked up the ramp while holding his jaw. And MJF turned and looked at the big screen, which listed MJF versus Allen versus Perry versus Guevara in a four way for the AEW Championship as the AEW double, double or nothing main event. So they they went. It took about six weeks to get here, and they I don't know. This is silly. So what what what'd you think? That there's no there's no there's no like none of these matches had an outcome that was in jeopardy. Like everybody knew you knew who's going to win every single match. You know what'd you think? Well, you know. MJF did a masterful job of trying to manipulate everybody, which which is his gimmick, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I knew Sammy was going to do something to him in the match. I said it last week, and he did. Um, uh, and we're, we're, are you still here? Okay, yeah. Um, but these are guys are the future. You know, these guys are the future. Sammy, Jungle Boy, uh, what's this guy's name? Um, Darby Allen. You know, they're like the future, you know what I'm saying? So is MJF. So um, I think Disco... Yeah, I, I, okay, I, 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 I got to drop very briefly, yeah. But yeah, they, yeah. they, they think those guys are the future, and I don't know. Yeah. This is it's a very cold main event, in my opinion. It is. It is. It should. It, I think they overbooked it, Glenn, at the, you know, doing the thing where if Sammy beat this guy and everybody had to fight to go to MJF and then MJF, that this was the worst turn when he's... He paid him money to lay down, and he said, right. okay, and all the kissing and hugging and all that, yes. really JoJo. Uh, and there's no heat on this, you know what I'm saying? And now right. they did, like I said, they went a long way to get to where they started, you know? Right, right, yeah. This is long, there's long-term, that's the thing. Bro, when you do long-term booking and everybody knows what the conclusion is going to be, it's like it doesn't, it's, there's no use doing long-term booking, you know? Um, that's been our AEW review.